We always knew that the Celestial Dragons were bad and I don't think there was a single individual that liked the Celestial Dragons and with everything that they've done, well at least already in the story, you would think that they couldn't get much worse, could they? Well, after what's happened and revealed in the manga, that's certainly not the case. Every time that they are on the screen, they do something that is more fluffed up than the last time. And it's actually insane that they're able to do this. So today, I wanted to talk about them because of, like I mentioned earlier, what happened in chapter 1095. But if you guys enjoy regular anime content, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe, to the channel hit the notification bell so you guys never saw a new video without it my name is potential unleashed and let's talk about why the celestial dragons are far worse than we realize the celestial dragons these are individuals who are descendants of the 19 of the first 20 nations who established what is now known as the world government the reason why it is 19 instead of 20 is because the members of the Nefertari family specifically Queen Lily she was not one of those who wanted to do whatever the Celestial Dragons were doing. These 19 individuals, they relocated to the Holy Land of Mary Jawa, which was built on top of the Red Line. Now this is not confirmed, but it's heavily implied that the Celestial Dragons were the ones who defeated the Ludarians and took over their territory on top of the Red Line. Since these individuals are the creator of the royal government, these royal nobles have the highest authority within the organization. There are also even hierarchy of among the world nobles. For example, the Gorosei, they have the highest authority of all the celestial dragons and the only person that is above them is Emu. Overall, the celestial dragons, they are free to do whatever they want, anything they please without any consequences like stealing, killing, anything, you name it. If they feel threatened in any way, shape, or form, they have the authority to summon a Navy Admiral, someone who is considered the Navy's strongest fighting force to do their bidding, defend them, and get them to safety. I do want to put a little bit of an asterisk behind that statement. I see a lot of people use that and want to say that that is the world government's strongest and oh well if that's their strongest then the pirates they have an advantage and that's not necessarily the case. I want to put an emphasis on the word navy not the entirety of the world government. So the god knights, the Gorosei, Emu, and other individuals who may not have been revealed yet they very well could be stronger than the marine soldiers that we've seen so far. Another thing that I want to mention, I said earlier that they can do whatever they want without consequence and that's kind of true. They can do anything on the lower realm without harm but the moment that they do something in Mary Jawa, that is a different story. We saw Mioshgard, he allowed Sai and Leah to attack Charles and escape and because of this disgrace that he showed as a celestial dragon, he was now being executed and judged by Garland. So depending on what is done, celestial dragons they still can suffer consequences we all know doflamingo's famous quote in line from marine Fort talking about justice this line essentially says that whoever has power they get to make all the rules now that we know that doflamingo is a fallen celestial dragon at least to me this line hits a little bit different. I'll talk about it a little bit later, but he's experienced both the highs and the lows, and that's why he's shaped out to be who he is. But yeah, since the Celestial Dragons have unlimited power, essentially, they could do whatever they want, and they've displayed time and time again how they rule all. Going back to Doflamingo for a second, something that has never really crossed my mind is why did Doflamingo become a warlord? We know that warlords were originally to be pirates who worked under the navy and the navy they offered this to them because they viewed their strength and their influence as something as an asset an example of this is mihawk he was at first known as a marine hunter before he became a warlord so the navy they decided to hire him as a warlord because it would be beneficial to them going back to doflamingo did he get the title of warlord because he was a former celestial dragon was it because of him being super strong or a super influential pirate or was of both i just wanted to put that out there so you guys could think about it another thing that i'd say stands out to me 
about this last year of dragons is a line from kid at the auction house he said compare with the purity of the greed nobles the villains of the world look pretty humane they don't even understand that the world's in this state because scum like them control it we've got our bad side but we've got our cute side too right killer so what does this actually mean kid is essentially saying that the celestial dragons make pirates like him look like saints and this is a lot coming from kid because we know that since he had the highest bounty of the supernovas the reason for that was because he was such a ruthless pirate killing women killing children plundering doing whatever he wants so somebody who's ruthless like him if he's calling celestial dragons uh was he saying that he's a saint compared to them that's saying a lot looking at him i mean the celestial dragons have done so many fluffed up things they're just too many to list but there's one moment that everybody always talks about and that's when charlos tried to take kami he ended up shooting hachi and you guys know the rest It's stuff like that that they do on a daily basis and get away with it. Why is that? It's because they're the gods who created the world. So it's only natural for gods to have whatever they desire. Most people view them this way. And even though some individuals want to step in, want to go against and challenge them, they can't because they know that if they do, they'll be punished for it. Hence why Garp, even though that he does not like them, he still saves them and he doesn't, uh, he declined a promotion because he doesn't want to work under them because he knows that they're scum but there's not really much he can do about it i do feel bad for some celestial dragons because not all of them are bad we've seen a few of them display how nice and kind-hearted they are we've seen it with Mioshkar, we've seen it with doflamingo's father homing they tried to be good and they were punished for it from doflamingo's perspective i don't blame him for being mad at his father he was someone who lived a luxurious life had everything and then he went to having nothing. I'm not saying that it's right, but I understand why Doflamingo was so pissed off at his father and why he decided to kill him because he took everything from him. The Don Quixote family, because they left the title of having a celestial dragon, that's why a different individual were able to hunt them down and try and kill them. Because looking at it, if the consequences weren't so bad, more individuals would challenge the world nobles. We've seen what happens when one tries to go against the celestial dragon we've seen it with Zoro, we've seen it with luffy and especially now that the goris are involved it's pretty hard to do in the recent chapter 1095 we saw that the goris say they hold a hunting competition once every three years if you go back 800 years ago to the 38 years that we've seen in the flashback that would mean that they've held a total of 254 competitions who knows how many different individuals they killed for their enjoyment why would they do something like this it's very simple it's a form of entertainment when you have everything what else is there to bring you enjoyment they find enjoyment in spending money and playing with human lives not saying that it's right but that's just what they do they have everything at their disposal devil fruits they are some of the most powerful items in the series and some of them cost billions of berries we've seen law we've seen luffy's we've seen the celestial dragons use devil fruits as their playthings forcing different slaves to eat them in order to entertain them the hunting competition there were chests in the background where we speculate they're holding devil fruits in dress rosa doflamingo held a tournament with the mare mare no Mi, possibly following somewhat in the footsteps of the war nobles heck even garland cutting down the king he did it in order to give himself a handicap because it would make Made things more interesting it's honestly really crazy how these individuals have so much influence so much power so much money at their disposal that they can toy with human life like this the more that we learn about the celestial dragons the more we hate them and the more we want them defeated they're scum and honestly you could say that they're worse than pirate zevik he was someone who wanted to take down the celestial dragons and become king of the world and him wanting that it doesn't even look as bad compared to them i will say if the world government if they're the final villains and it looks like it's going to happen especially with the god knights with emu and the gorsei reveals oda he's doing a really good job of making the celestial dragons villains making people hate them and we cannot wait until the revolutionaries the pirates and everybody else involved takes them down those are just some of my thoughts about the celestial dragons especially now that they did something far worse than they've already done which is saying something because 
they're already pretty bad. Like, how can you be much worse than that? Let me know how you guys feel about them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out a new video from me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. It's on the screen in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to unleash your potential.